I'm Nick Snow, watching government for Oil and Gas Journal in Washington, D.C. When the world's leading governments committed last fall in Paris to cut greenhouse gas emissions enough to reduce global climate change impacts, one immediate question was where natural gas would fit. That concern has only grown as the Obama administration has tried to move aggressively to curb methane emissions from oil and gas operations. As executive director of the Joint Institute for Strategic Energy Analysis at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory in Golden, Colorado, Doug Arendt works at the policy intersections of energy, finance, and society. Gas competes or relatively supports flexibility better than other sources in a low carbon power system he said during a May 11th presentation at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Arendt's research concentrated on power generation and not other gas applications, such as home heating and transportation. He called the goal of 80% decarbonization by 2050, which was set at the Paris talks, quote, a pretty steep step, but achievable. Using more gas to generate electricity will help make it happen, Arendt suggested. Its role will depend on pricing and availability, he said. Utilities will need to be more nimble and robust, Arendt said. Their biggest concern will be what the most prudent investment would be. There's concern about over-reliance on a single fuel source, he observed. Power generation from gas will need to climb to reach mid- and low-carbon targets, he said, adding that a hybrid of gas and renewables looks the most promising. The technologies themselves are growing more competitive, he indicated. Gas assets could provide significant revenue later on, even if they don't produce much energy, because they would provide flexibility, Arendt said. But it will be necessary for the gas industry to begin managing emissions more effectively soon to ensure that the fuel remains part of a decarbonization system, he warned. There's been a lot of conversation during the downturn, not just about becoming more efficient, but also preserving human capital. I think that's a healthy development, he told his CSIS audience. In methane, the biggest issue is social license, particularly as local communities try to exercise more control. When it comes to the best abatement opportunities, Arendt said that leak detectors and repair and load management are low-cost options. Pipeline replacement is more expensive, but could provide jobs, he added. In most decarbonization scenarios, Gas capacity grows in the near and medium terms, but utilization declines in the longer run. That reduction, that should affect investment decisions, Arendt said. Once carbon reduction passes 50%, gas will remain economic only with carbon capture and storage. The power generation industry will need to become more financially nimble, he predicted. Systems with more gas generation will require less storage. Let's watch in government for this week. In Washington, I'm Nick Snow for Oil and Gas Journal.